Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about Diddy. There's a lot to be said. Quick little note, um, I'm going to be dividing this video in the sense of the indictment, the 14 pages of the indictment document have been leaked or public, whatever. And if you guys want me to go over that, we can do that, but I wanna do that in a separate dedicated video. That being said, today we're gonna to be talking about Diddy in terms of updates, in terms of what's going on right now, because God knows there is a lot going on. Interestingly enough and ironically, I filmed this video twice and twice the files were corrupted, something that has never happened to me in like almost 10 years on YouTube. So I thought that was interesting and somehow appropriate for the topic. So judge orders Sean Diddy Combs sent to jail where he awaits sex trafficking trial. Combs, who pleaded not guilty to charges of sex trafficking, racketeering, and transportation to engage in prostitution, was denied bail. We'll get into it a little bit more later, but the point of him being denied bail is significant, not just because obviously physically he cannot leave, but it is why was he denied bail. And that is because he is being deemed as a big enough threat and dangerous enough generally that he has no business being free until the trial continues, which in and of itself is a big deal. Aside from that, they're also concerned that he's a flight risk, which makes sense because I could totally see him trying to go to some random country that has like no extradition laws or something, considering the allegations out there, like what he's going on trial for are not small issues, right? If there's any time to run away, it probably would be when you're being accused of trafficking. Sean Diddy Combs, the spotlight adoring music impresario who helped launch the careers of some of the biggest names in hip hop and R&B was denied bail and sent to jail Tuesday after being accused in a three count federal indictment of having used his sprawling business empire to abuse, threaten and traffic women in order to quote unquote fulfill his sexual desires and protect his reputation. Prosecutors in the Southern District of New York accuse Combs of sex trafficking, racketeering and transportation to engage in prostitution in the indictment unsealed Tuesday. So that's what I was talking about, the unsealed indictment. If you guys want me to go over that, we can do that more in detail and look at the, I think it's like 14 pages. It accuses Combs 54, along with members of his security and household staff, personal assistants and other associates in his business of creating a criminal enterprise whose members and associates engaged in and attempted to engage in, among other crimes, sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. Now you guys know that on this channel, I like the benefit of the doubt. The benefit of the doubt here ran out a long time ago. I think he's guilty as fuck, to be clear. Even if you wanted to give this man the benefit of the doubt, the sole fact that these crimes expand in so many different directions because in one direction, we have sex trafficking. In another one, we have forced labor. We also have kidnapping. We also have arson. We also have bribery, obstruction to justice. So when you see that someone is stretching out in all these different ways, it becomes difficult to think, ah, yes, this is this person's innocent. Thankfully, I haven't seen a lot of Diddy apologists, but in case there were, I just really don't know how you read something like this and think, oh, it's still likely he's maybe, you know, innocent. The indictment centers around Combs' alleged orchestration of elaborate sex parties that he called freak offs and that included the distribution of drugs, the transportation of sex workers across state and international lines, and the use of force and threats against women who were forced to participate. He appeared somber during his arraignment hearing Tuesday in Manhattan, where he pleaded not guilty and was denied bail in front of his three adult sons and other supporters. Two of the charges carry a maximum sentence of life in prison. Prosecutors had asked that he remain jailed until trial. We knew these charges were serious, but the fact that two of the charges contained the maximum sentence of life in prison, that must be scary as fuck for him. I personally feel like life in prison is appropriate for him, so I'm fine with that. That's also why I could see him being a flight risk if he were allowed bail, if he were allowed to be free. I could totally see this man completely running away because two of the charges possibly giving you a max sentence of life in prison, 
I feel like that would be enough to make him run away. In a memo supporting that request, U.S. Attorney Damian Williams said Combs' disposition to violence cannot be reasonably prevented through bail conditions and called the rapper turned mogul a flight risk who poses a significant danger to the community. The memo, which says the government interviewed more than 50 victims and witnesses, describes decades of alleged physical abuse by Combs against women, including some he was romantically involved with, and the alleged kidnapping in 2011 of a person identified only as individual one as reasons he should be detained. The memo also says that agents recovered three AR-15s, two of which were broken down in parts with magazines loaded in them, and Combs' bedroom closet during a search of his Miami home in March. The serial numbers on the ARs were defaced, Williams says. During the hearing, Assistant U.S. Attorney Emily Johnson said Combs' history of substance abuse was also among the reasons he should be jailed until trial. After he was arrested Monday night at a hotel in Manhattan where he was staying, she said law enforcement found a pink powder in his room that is believed to be a narcotic. Where to begin with all of this? The fact that there's an alleged kidnapping of individual one in 2011 is terrifying, but if there are a lot of other articles about this, and in another one that I read, they kind of give a history of all the times Diddy was in trouble. And all of this shit starts in like 2003, I think was the first year where shit started going weird, let's put it that way, with Diddy. So it's like you have 20 years of basically shit following you. So it also makes sense that you'd be denied bail because it's not like you got a fine for driving too fast this one time and this is your first issue with the law. It's like it's a long-standing thing and all of the accusations are serious. None of this is benign shit. So I don't even know how they could have expected that he'd be allowed to be out on bail, also considering that these crimes involve a level of violence. The other thing that I thought was really creepy was the three AR-15s. Now, granted, I expect a lot of celebrity cases to have guns or arms or whatever, but for most celebrities, it's usually a level of fuckery, you know? Like, they get fucking hammered and they decide they want to shoot random shit in their backyard. Like, stupid things, very frivolous things. In this particular case, it's specifically dark because you're kidnapping, allegedly, you're allegedly kidnapping, you're allegedly trafficking, you're allegedly drugging people. So when you have guns, what my brain goes to is, are you using these to keep people hostage, to keep people quiet, to essentially control people? You know, it's not the usual celebrity fuckery. This is stuff that's done in order to, well, keep yourself out of jail and keep these people that you're abusing allegedly or hurting quiet. So the fact that also they have the serial numbers uh, scratched off, that doesn't look good, I will say that, because I mean, again, if you're a celebrity just pulling some stupid shit in the backyard, do you really need to scratch off serial numbers? Also, the pink powder in his room that's believed to be a narcotic, I mean, I think him doing drugs at this point is the least of our problems. If we're gonna talk about the problems with drugs, it's him drugging people. And actually, on Twitter, this one person who was allegedly a bodyguard of sorts shared a lot of information. The TLDR of that video in terms of drugs was that instead of spiking the alcohol, they would basically spike the mixer drinks, you know? So all the girls who'd wanna make a fucking vodka cranberry or some shit, it'd be the cranberry juice that would be spiked. They'd all be really careful opening the alcohol, being like, oh, let's make sure this bottle's closed. So they had a false sense of security seeing that the bottle hadn't been opened yet. So they're like, okay, this isn't spiked, this is safe, whatever. Meanwhile, what's spiked is the juice, which is particularly fucked up and particularly malevolent, like any type of spiking, mind you. But the fact that they thought it through that far that they're like, ah, yes, Let's have them c open some bottles that clearly have never been opened so they feel safe, and then they feel like they can drink, and then let's spike the juice so they'll put that in and boom, there you go. So if that claim by the bodyguard is true, which I tend to believe because I don't know why you'd make that up, yikes. Combs attorneys had proposed that he be released on a 50 million bond, which they say is secured by equity in his 48 million home in Miami, in a letter to Judge Robin Tarnofsky, they said Combs was not a flight risk and that his legal counsel was in possession of his passport as well as those of his mother and his four daughters. 
but Tarnovsky denied their request, citing, among other things, Combs' substance abuse and anger issues. The indictment demands that Combs forfeit any property and money used to commit his crimes he's accused of, though it doesn't specify any particular assets or amount. Good thinking on the passports, honestly. Williams reflected on Combs' fall from grace Tuesday. A year ago, Sean Combs stood in Times Square and was handed a key to New York City, he said. Today he's been indicted and will face justice in the Southern District of New York. Outside the courthouse Tuesday morning, Mark Agnifilo, one of Combs' attorneys, said Combs is innocent and would plead not guilty. I mean, of course one of Combs' attorneys is gonna say that. It's not like Diddy's attorney is gonna come out and be like, yeah, motherfucker's fucking guilty as shit, dude. Like, duh. He's going to fight this with all his energy and all of his might and the full confidence of his lawyers, Agnifilo told reporters, and I expect a long battle with a good result for Mr. Combs. Combs is the highest profile music artist to face sexual misconduct charges since the R&B singer R. Kelly, born Robert Sylvester Kelly, was sentenced in 2022 to more than 30 years in prison for sexually abusing fans, some of them children, racketeering, and sex trafficking. Combs, who helped boost the career of some of the biggest names in hip hop and R&B, including the notorious B.I.G., Mary J. Blige, and Usher, has seen his star dim since a bombshell lawsuit filed in November by his longtime girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura. So Cassie, right? We remember what happened with Cassie. We remember seeing the video of him like pushing her and I believe he actually was beating her as well in the hallway of a hotel. We all saw that, at least I saw that. So that alone does not bode well for him. Aside from that, the moment that you are being not necessarily compared to, but put in parallel with R. Kelly, that's when you know you are really fucked. R. Kelly, of all people, like, and some of the charges are the same, mind you. So, like, I think the racketeering was the same. Sex trafficking, yeah. So, you and R. Kelly have a lot in common. Look at what happened to R. Kelly. That would be enough to not make me super confident as a lawyer going into this, but anyway. R&B singer known as Cassie accused him of years of physical and sexual abuse. And, fun story, I'm not gonna read the whole Cassie thing because I do have a separate video about that and I wanted to focus on what's new just to avoid confusion. But with Cassie, he settled in one day. In one day, he settled, um, and we don't know the terms of that settlement, but that alone to me says something. And granted, there was video footage of him being abusive towards her, so, I mean, to be fair, there was a reason to settle because, yeah, you did the thing. But I believe he still did claim innocence, but then the settlement was just to, like, not have this be prolonged, which is hilarious to me because any innocent person wouldn't settle with accusations this serious in one day. Like, I feel like you'd at least think it over for over 24 hours, right? Before you just decide to be like, yeah, let me just settle on these like horrible accusations that I'm totally innocent of, but. Many of the allegations in the indictment closely mirror claims Ventura made in her lawsuit, including that he forced women to have sex with male prostitutes and participate in drug-fueled orgies that Combs called freak-offs. Now I know this is totally a detail, but the fact that they're called freak-offs is really disgusting to me. There's just something about it that makes me feel deeply uncomfortable and it's probably knowing what else Diddy was up to that makes it creepy because if it were just all consensual people just having an orgy, I just think a freak-off was a funny name, but in this particular case, there's something very grim about all of it. The 14-page indictment called them elaborate and produced sex performance that Combs is alleged to have arranged, directed, masturbated during, and often electronically recorded. They occurred regularly, sometimes lasted multiple days, and often involved multiple commercial sex workers, according to the indictment, which says that federal agents raided Combs' homes in Los Angeles and Miami in March, they seized various freak-off supplies. Now hold on to your hats, because including narcotics and more than a thousand bottles of baby oil and lubricant. Every time I hear the a thousand bottles of baby oil, I shiver a little bit because the concept of someone having that many just on hand, I don't even know what to say about that. I'm moving on. Williams said they also seized electronic devices that contained images and videos of the freak-offs with multiple victims. The indictment says Combs and his business associates would lure women into his world, often under the pretense of a romantic relationship, and then, and then use force, threats, and coercion, including drugs, to keep them obedient and compliant to compel their participation in freak-offs. No victims are named in the indictment. The sex trafficking count mentions victim one, 
whose interactions with Combs, as described in the indictment, mirror those in Ventura's lawsuit. So I will say, I do think it's particularly heinous and particularly disgusting to lure women into the weird freak off world or whatever via romantic relationships. Now, there's no doubt that everything in this is fucked up. I think that goes without saying, but I'm also talking about the emotional toll that that must take on someone, let alone the experience at the freak off. But even the realization, like imagine thinking you are going to be in a romantic relationship with someone you are in some way emotionally invested, right? You're emotionally invested. This person makes you believe they're emotionally invested. And then the person you're supposedly in a romantic relationship with brings you to this thing where you're used, where you're potentially drugged, where you are threatened and forced to have some kind of weird sexual contact with people. Can you imagine how fucked up that would be emotionally? The indictment, for instance, mentions a 2016 assault on Ventura that was captured on hotel surveillance, as we well know. When his authority or reputation was threatened with negative publicity, the indictment alleges, including around late 2023, after Ventura's lawsuit was filed, Combs and members and associates of his enterprise are alleged to have pressured witnesses and victims, including through attempted bribery, to stay silent and not report what they experienced or knew to law enforcement, according to the indictment. So I think this is part of also why they don't want to let him out on bail. Now, granted, his associates could always do that dirty work of trying to get people to shut up, try to pay people off. But I feel like at this point, he's being watched too closely for any of that to happen, which I think is also part of the bail denial is to not have him cause any type of obstruction. At the news conference Tuesday, Williams, the US attorney said Combs had not acted alone and indicated it was possible others may still face charges. He said he couldn't specify how many people are believed to have been victimized by Combs, but stressed that the investigation is active and encouraged anyone with information about this case to come forward and do it quickly. Combs has been charged with RICO conspiracy to use his business and employees of that business and other close associates to get his way, Williams said. Since Ventura's lawsuit, several others have accused Combs in separate lawsuits of sexual assault or sexual misconduct. Combs' attorneys are fighting those suits and have vehemently denied the allegations. So I was on Twitter and a lot of this was coming up on my timeline. And one point that was being made consistently by a lot of people is that Diddy is the one going down right now, but they were also saying, guys, be prepared for some of your favorites to be going down with him because then you know, a bunch of people were like taking out pictures of like Diddy with basically anyone, like Diddy with Jay-Z, Diddy with like Kim Kardashian, Diddy with like, okay, you know, like they're celebrities, the worlds collide all the time. So like celebrities have pictures with basically every other celebrity that doesn't necessarily mean anything. But the reality is that realistically, yes, there will be other celebrities being dragged down with them because I doubt he's gonna go down alone. If he's gonna start going down, I think he's gonna bring down anyone who was in these freak offs, was at his parties, all of that. So I would not be surprised if there are gonna be other celebrities dragged into this who are involved, who are somewhat aware. It's gonna get very dark, but it's very difficult for me to believe. Just even logistically, a celebrity in Hollywood, who are they gonna invite to their parties? Like, yeah, they might invite friends, they might invite people who are outside of the spotlight, sure. But realistically, do we think they're never going to invite anyone who's in the spotlight? Realistically, are they not maybe close friends with other celebrities, you know? So a lot of people were tweeting being like, be ready for some of your favorites to be involved in this. And I 100% believe that whether people are involved or not, there are a bunch of other celebrities who are least aware of what's going on, which in and of itself is bad. So you guys can let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always, and I'll catch you guys next time.